Some interesting news on the AI gaming front from Sony, namely a Horizon Zero Dawn AI experiment that they did get some grief on. Are we really looking at a major feature in the future of gaming? And if so, can we make it look a little better today just using tools that are readily available? I'll give you a spoiler. You can. So yeah, Sony definitely caught some strays when a leaked video of an AI demo got into the wild. The video featured the character Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn as, you know, kind of an interactive character that players could chat with. Reactions range from, we don't want this, to, this isn't very good. I'll speak to both, but really on the latter side, I, truthfully, I don't think that's very fair. This is a dev in his office recording a screen with his phone camera, so, I mean, it's hardly meant to be, like, showcased on PlayStation's state of play. We'll take a look at it in a second, but very briefly, in case you are part of the audience that does not follow games, Horizon Zero Dawn is a PlayStation franchise that was developed by Guerrilla Games, the first game of which was released in 2017. You play as Aloy, who does fight robot dinosaurs. There are really only two camps here, either that is stupid or that is awesome. To both, I will say there is a surprisingly good narrative reason for the robot dinosaurs, and to be honest, I will put at least the first Horizon Zero Dawn as one of my top 10 post-apocalyptic settings of like the, I don't know, the last 10 years, let's say. The first game has spawned one sequel and a number of, I guess, like kind of like side projects here and there. And while Aloy hasn't hit the mass awareness of like a character like Nintendo's Mario, Sony have certainly positioned her as a bit of an icon for the PlayStation platform. All of which is to say, you know, using Aloy for this experiment does definitely make a lot of sense, much more so than say using Abby from The Last of Us Part Two. No spoilers here, but season two viewers, if you are not familiar with the game, man, buckle up, you're in for a ride. So let's take a look at a clip from the demo footage to set context here. Then we'll take a dive into what tech was used to create it, and then how any one of us could make a better version of it, sort of. Okay, here's the clip. Hi, Aloy. It's been a while. How are you? Hello. I'm managing all right. Just dealing with a sore throat. How have you been? Quick note, it has been brought to my attention. They've been a little on the aggressive side in terms of takedowns of this particular clip. I am citing fair use here. I am respectfully not showcasing the entire two minute clip. And according to my legal team of Claude, Chat, and Llama, uh, I am actually within the bounds of fair use to use this clip. So giving a quick analysis to that clip, there are obviously some things to note. For one, we have a pretty obvious massive delay between the question being asked and Aloy's answer. Additionally, the voice is pretty robotic. They are clearly not using Aloy's voice actress, Ashley Birch, for this. Uh, we will talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and furthermore, the lip sync is, you know, it's pretty off. Now, according to reports, this demo utilized OpenAI's Whisper for the speech to text and a combination of the large language models, ChatGPT and Llama to, you know, generate the text that the speech model was then going to say. That long pause is obviously the latency between those two models, although it is important to note that, you know, probably after this demo was created that OpenAI did release uh, ChatGPT 4.5, which, you know, is much snappier and much more conversational. Face animation, and I do believe that this is running the game engine, is handled via Sony's internal Mockingbird system. And although this demo was running on a PC as Director of Software Engineering, Sharwin Radobartajal, hope I got that right, uh, notes it is possible to get key parts of this system running on a PS5 with relatively little overhead. Now to note, I don't think that this means that you will have you know, a LLM locally running on your PlayStation 5, but rather API calls to various models. Sharwin also goes on to say, this is just a glimpse of what is possible. And I very much do agree with that. There's a very interesting part in the demo when we transition from, you know, sort of chat Aloy into in-game Aloy. And although the footage is pretty low res, you, you can actually see in-game Aloy's, uh, you know, lip movement. And look, I know that that's not something that everyone will be into, but look, one of the big criticisms of the Horizon sequel was that Aloy was a bit on the chatty side. Granted, none of this is rolling out like this summer or anything, but I did think that this made for an interesting opportunity to see what this might look like in the future. And that is the key word. We aren't building a game engine or anything here, but rather you know, a simulation of a higher fidelity version of this in, in the name of science and education. 
Okay, kicking off, I started off by creating a trained version of Aloy via Allura. Uh, you can accomplish this in a number of places. I used Crea.ai here uh, just because it's very easy to do. We simply grab a number of Aloy images and then we can train the model as to what Aloy looks like. I will say that the variety of outputs that you will get very much depends on what you bring in. In this case, we did not bring in a lot of Aloy images. So, you know, the results are you know pretty flat. Although even with that limited training data, we can do things like uh, Aloy holding an apple, a very small apple, but you know, holding an apple nonetheless. To replicate our demo footage, I took the train model and gave it the prompt of Aloy standing in a cave with blue and orange highlights. We ended up with this as an image. I thought it was pretty solid. From here, I ended up taking that image over to Magnific, which is an AI image upscaler. Just adds like a little touch of realism. Magnific does tend to be very great with things like skin texture, uh, catch lights in the eye and hair textures. For the voice, I do think it's pretty intentional that the demo did not utilize the voice of Ashley Birch as Aloy because, well, I mean, that gets sticky. I'm not going to get into that whole thing here, but suffice to say, you know, I think that if Sony did want to pursue this, they, they would definitely have to be paying actually a good chunk of change. Now, I did train up an Aloy voice model, but again, this is just for demonstration purposes and I have since deleted it. That said, don't want to go that direction and honestly, beyond this experiment, it's what I prefer. Uh, I think the best course of action is just to create your own character voices. And that brings us to today's sponsor, Hume. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole ton of detail here, uh, considering that I just did a deep dive into Hume in our last video. It is linked below if you want to check that out. But one area that I do think is very worth noting, particularly in light of all of this, is the voice designer. Hume is, of course, a text-to-speech platform, and their latest model, Octave, has a fairly unique feature in that the model actually understands the context of the text it is speaking. It does also have a pretty cool voice designer in which you can describe how you want your voice to sound uh, and then save that out as a repeatable character. For example, here's a character that I generated up, the female wizard. Uh, let's take a listen to her real quick. Never repeat this, but the Dark Lord, he, um, likes kittens. Two places that I think Hume really fly are audiobook narration and, well, the price. On the audiobook side, we can generate up a completely fictitious novelization of Horizon Zero Dawn, written, of course, by Donka Mindy. As dawn spilled over the horizon, bathing the land in copper and gold, she stood atop a ridge, bow gripped tightly, eyes locked on the herd of metallic beasts grazing below. On the pricing side, it begins with the very generous free tier of 10,000 characters a month or about you know 10 minutes a month, completely for free with unlimited custom voices. From there, plans start at $3 to $10. I'll say the $10 a month plan, which is the one that kind of makes the most sense for all of us, definitely is the most competitively priced text-to-speech platform on the market. If you want to see more of Hume in action, you can check out the full walkthrough that I did. That link is down below. And if you just want to get started with the you know free plan on Hume, that link is also down below. Heading back over to our experiment in the land of Meridian, uh, I just ended up asking ChatGPT to pretend it was Aloy and then asked it some questions. Uh, I then took that text, generated up a voice, and then headed over to Hedra. So Hedra has been around for a bit and they've recently just launched their character three model. You guys definitely shouted Hedra out quite a bit uh, in the video on Hume when I asked what you know the, the current best lip sync model is. So as a super brief demo, we can create a character here. So uh, let's go with create image, giving it the prompt, a female dark wizard in the woods. We end up with this character. Now bringing in the audio that we earlier generated up in Hume. Never repeat this, but the dark Lord, he, um, likes kittens. I mean, that's pretty good. The level of disdain she has on the likes kittens line. I mean, that's that's chef's kiss. So bringing in our Aloy image, we can, we can sort of have a mock conversation with her. Hey, it's been a minute. How are you? Hello, friend. It has been a while, hasn't it? I've been keeping busy, tracking machines, exploring ruins, always moving forward. But I'm here now, so let's catch up. How have you been holding up? I've been pretty good. So there have been some interesting reports recently about an AI version of you appearing in a video game adaptation of your life. Uh, How does that make you feel? Well, that's strange. I've faced rogue AIs threatening to wipe out humanity, but the idea of people recreating me as some kind of digital companion, it's a little unsettling, to be honest. Still, I suppose it's flattering in a weird way. 
Maybe this A.I. Aloy can handle a few bandit camps for me. It would free me up to explore a few more ruins, or just take a nap for once. But seriously, let's hope they get my hair right. Now again, to reiterate, that and the Sony demo are two different things. Mine is pre-baked video and theirs is, you know, an actual interactive experience utilizing a game engine. But the branches between generative AI and game development are growing closer and closer together. Uh, recently, friend of the channel, Tile, reskinned the base Cyberpunk 2077 game with Runway's Restyle, which I actually just recently covered as well, uh, for this result. And while again, this reskinning is not happening in real time, uh, at the rate of progress that we're moving, it really won't be long until it is. And I do definitely have to shout out my favorite use case for AI NPCs when, you know, this guy utilized the Matrix game to convince the various NPCs walking around that they were simulations. You don't mess with that stuff. The system is too powerful for us to take on. And look, I know that this early in, the technology is definitely rife for meme content, but, you know, give it some time to mature. And, well, maybe I can finally find out the story of how that guy took an arrow to the knee. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.